Yami Yugi versus Raphael, the rematch. Yugi is gone, his soul ripped away due to Yami's actions in the last duel. Raphael is ready to finish the job. Ultimately, Yugi will win this duel by exposing the darkness in Raphael's heart and then conquering it. However, I wondered, did Yugi actually learn from their previous duel? Or was it just the plot that granted him this victory? Let's find out together. Just before the duel begins, Raphael gives Yugi Joey's Claw of Hermos card, a move that is, while honorable, something that will ultimately come back to bite him. Raphael goes first, and he draws. His opening hand consists of Guardian Treasure, Guardian Shield, and four cards that will never be seen, never be used, and will never be played. Why is that? Well, that is because he activates Guardian Treasure. Due to its effect, by discarding five cards, he can draw two new cards. He draws Backup Gardener and Guardian Force. Now, while this card remains face up on the field, Raphael will actually be able to draw two cards during each of his draw phases, instead of just one. And so, Raphael ends his turn by summoning Backup Gardener into defense and setting Guardian Force face down. Now, for those that think this turn seemed a little familiar, that is because it's almost identical to his first turn in their previous duel. It's Yugi's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Queen's Knight, King's Knight, Brave Attack, Five Star Twilight, Rope of Life, and Chain Destruction. In fact, the sub actually shows Yugi drawing the wrong card here. As you can see, he draws Big Shield Gardener. However, this is a mistake. Ironically, the dub is actually the one to fix this. Since Yugi has no monsters with attack high enough, Yugi summons Queen's Knight into defense and ends his turn. Why didn't Yugi set his Rope of Life or Chain Destruction traps face down? Because, you know, they've got some decent abilities. Well, we can actually explain this away. Since Yugi has 5 star Twilight in his hand, he knows he can eventually get out his Karibo Brothers. One of the Karibo Brothers' effects lets him discard a trap card to reduce a monster's attack points. Yugi knows more or less all of the cards in Raphael's deck, so it could be assumed he knows that Raphael doesn't play multiples of cards, which is what Chain Destruction needs to be activated. So in the end, I can see why Yugi didn't set Chain Destruction. But what about Rope of Life? Well, in the anime, Rope of Life, you have to discard your entire hand to activate it. And since it's so early in the duel, that's quite a steep cost to pay. So he wants to save it for a little bit later. So, in my books, no misplays from Yugi here. It's a fine turn. It's Raphael's turn and he draws twice, thanks to Guardian Treasure. He draws Guardian Graal and Gravity Axe Graal. Yes, just like in their last duel, get used to it, he's gonna be drawing the perfect combos of cards. The equip spell he needs to get the monster out and the monster. Raphael starts by activating Gravity Axe Graal, equipping it to Backup Gardener. This increases its attack by 500 and makes it so the opponent cannot change battle positions of their monsters. Now, since Gravity Axe Graal is on the field and Guardian Graal is in his hand, Raphael can special summon it straight to the field. Raphael then activates the effect of Backup Gardener to move one equip spell to another of his monsters. He equips Gravity Axe onto Guardian Graal. Raphael enters his battle phase and destroys Queen's Knight. Raphael ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Monster Reborn. He activates it straight away to special summon Queen's Knight back from the grave. He then normal summons King's Knight, and now since King's Knight was summoned while Queen's Knight is on the field, King's Knight special summons Jack's Knight from his deck. Yugi follows this play by activating his Brave Attack. Due to its effect, he can combine the attack points of all three of his monsters together into one single battle. However, the monsters are destroyed at the end of the battle phase. Raphael, however, activates his counter trap, Guardian Force. Since there are no Guardian monsters in his grave, he can negate the activation of a spell card and destroy it. With no more moves left, Yugi is forced to end his turn. It's Raphael's turn, and he draws twice. He gets Guardian Elmer and Butterfly Dagger Elmer. Raphael activates Butterfly Dagger Elmer, equipping it to Backup Gardener, increasing its attack by 300. And not only that, if Butterfly Dagger Elmer is destroyed and sent to the graveyard while equipped to a monster, it will return immediately back to the hand. Interesting fact about this card, by the way. This equip card has been banned since 2005. And the reason why that is, is because it can create an infinite loop. Why is that a problem? 
Well, due to this, you can perform some very naughty plays, like infinitely drawing with Royal Magical Library, resulting in, say, a guaranteed Exodia. Or with Magical Marionette, you can get infinite attack points for an instant OTK. Or with Fire Princess and Spell Absorption, you can cause infinite burn damage. Raphael isn't going to do any of these plays today, but I just thought I'd mention it because it's interesting. Since Guardian Dagger Elmer is on the field, Raphael is allowed to normal summon his Guardian Elmer. He does so and uses Guardian Elmer's effect to equip one spell in his grave to itself. He chooses Guardian Shield, which keep in mind was discarded to the grave during the first turn of the duel. With Guardian Shield equipped, it increases the defense of Elmer by 300. And now it has the effect that if a Guardian monster would be destroyed by battle, this card can be destroyed instead. Raphael uses the effect of Backup Gardener to equip Butterfly Dagger Elmer to Elmer instead. He enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys Queen's Knight and King's Knight, dealing the first damage of the duel. Raphael ends his turn. But hold on just a second. Why didn't Raphael destroy Jax Knight? Jax Knight is the only monster that is strong enough to get over his Elmer. Did he just want to do more damage? Well, that seems a bit out of character for Raphael. So why didn't he do this? Sadly, there's only one logical explanation for this. The plot made him do this. You see, Yugi needs a five-star monster on his field next turn so they can activate his five-star Twilight spell. So that means, sadly, Raphael, you have made a huge misplay. I know it's not your fault, the plot made you do this, but had you destroyed Jack's Knight, then the next play that Yugi's gonna do would not be available to him. And most likely this would have been a domino effect. Yugi would never be able to get back into the duel. Honestly, I think he would have won the duel. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Mystical Space Typhoon. Yugi starts by activating 5 Star Twilight, tributing Jax Knight to special summon the 5 Karibo Brothers. Karibo, Kariba, Karibi, Karibe, and Karibu. Yugi activates the effect of Karibu. By discarding one trap from his hand, he can reduce the attack of one monster on the field by 1500. He discards Chain Destruction and targets Guardian Graal. Yugi then uses Kariba's effect to send one each of his Karibo Brothers to the grave, to special summon Curry Babylon. Curry Babylon's attack then becomes equal to each Karibo in his grave. Finally, Yugi plays Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy Gravity Axe Graal, reducing Graal's attack even further. Yugi enters his battle phase and attacks Graal, but Raphael uses his Guardian Shield's effect equipped to Elmer to prevent Graal from being destroyed by battle. Guardian Shield is sent to the grave, however Raphael still takes the damage. Yugi sets Rope of Life face down and ends his turn. As he does, Graal's attack returns to normal. It's Raphael's turn, and he draws twice. He gets the Seal of Orichalcos and Guardian Formation. Despite Yugi's objections, Raphael plays the Seal of Orichalcos. From now on, all of Raphael's monsters will receive 500 attack boosts. Also, Raphael's monsters can be summoned into the Spell and Trap Zones too. Monsters summoned there cannot be attacked unless there are no monsters in the main monster zone. Oh, and of course, the loser of this duel will now lose their soul. Raphael enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys Curry Babylon. However, Yuki activates his Rope of Life to re-summon Curry Babylon back to the field with an extra 800 attack. However, to do this play, he has to discard his entire hand. However, since his hand was empty, he doesn't discard. In the real world, you can't do this. If something says you have to discard your hand to activate a card effect, most likely you need to have cards in your hand. However, this is the anime. It's fine. It's cool. Raphael sets Guardian Formation face down and ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Dark Magic Curtain. He activates Kari Babylon's effect to remove it from play to then special summon the five Karibo brothers back from the Banish Zone. He activates Kari Bez effect to banish all five again so they can special summon Kari Bandit. By paying half of his life points, Yugi then activates his Dark Magic Curtain to special summon Dark Magician from his deck. Yugi enters his battle phase and uses Dark Magician to attack Guardian Elmer. However, Raphael activates his Guardian Formation to negate the attack and move Guardian Elmer into the back row. The second effect of Guardian Formation then activates, letting Raphael activate one equipped spell from his deck. He chooses Celestial Sword Iatos. He equips it to Backup Gardener, increasing its attack by 300. With no further moves, Yugi ends his turn. It's Raphael's turn, and he draws twice. He gets Guardian Iatos and Kushido's Spirit. Since Celestial Sword Iatos is on the field and there are no monsters in Raphael's graveyard, Raphael is able to special summon his ace monster, Guardian Iatos. Raphael activates Backup Gardener's effect to equip Celestial Sword Iatos onto it instead. 
Yugi, knowing full well what Raphael's next play is going to be, he activates the effect of Curry Bandit. By tributing itself, he can draw five cards, but he must discard any monsters he draws. The cards he gets are Magical Hats, Magical Pigeon, Gazelle the King of Mythical Beasts, Gamma the Magnet Warrior, and Electromagnetic Turtle. He sends the Gazelle, Gamma, and Turtle to the grave. Raphael activates the effect of Iatos. By sending Celestial Sword Iatos to the grave, he can banish monsters from the top of Yugi's graveyard in order until he gets to a non-monster card. For every card banished, this card gains attack equal to those monsters' attacks. That is, however, unless they have zero attack points, as monsters with zero attack points are not banished through this effect. Why am I making a big deal of that? Well, let's reveal it, shall we? Gazelle, Gamma, and Curry Bandit are banished before being cut off by Dark Magic Curtain. Iatos' attack increases to 7,000. Raphael enters his battle phase and attempts to go for game by attacking Dark Magician. However, Yugi reveals the effect of his electromagnetic turtle in his graveyard. By banishing it, he can end the battle phase. Iato's attack is returned to normal. Raphael, with his OTK ruined and with no more plays left, ends his turn. Okay, I really want to quickly just address the turtle in the room. I'm not sure how Yugi knew Iatos didn't banish monsters with zero attack. But let's just say, since Yugi has seen this card before, he knows for a fact that Iatos does not banish zero attack monsters. It's a shame they didn't set this up in like the last door, like there was a zero attack monster in his graveyard. I don't think he has any others like that. But like, that would have been cool, foreshadowing to like this event now. But that would mean it could be said that Yugi actually sided out his original catapult turtle and sided in the electromagnetic turtle before this duel on purpose. Since catapult turtle was ultimately the catalyst for why he lost the last duel. Whereas electromagnetic turtle is kind of a hard counter to Iatos. Fair play to Yugi for this tactical play. It was very lucky that he happened to discard it, of course. But that's just Yugi, isn't it? It's, it's fine. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Big Shield Gardener. He summons it in defense, switches Dark Magician to defense, sets Magical Hats face down, and ends his turn. It's back to Raphael and he draws twice. He gets Rod of Silence Kaiest and Guardian Kaiest. Raphael enters his battle phase and attacks Dark Magician. However, Yugi plays Magical Hats to create four hats, hiding his two monsters inside. Raphael attacks one of the hats, but it was the hat containing Big Shield Gardener. Raphael then attacks again with Guardian Elmer. This time he destroys one of the empty hats. Finally, with a 50-50 chance of attacking Dark Magician, Raphael attacks with Guardian Graal. However, it's a miss. Raphael enters his main phase 2 and activates Rod of Silence Kaiest, equipping it to backup Gardener, increasing its defense by 500. Now with this card on the field, Raphael can summon his Guardian Kaiest. Kaiest is unaffected by spell effects and cannot be targeted for attacks. Could Raphael have summoned this monster during the main phase 1 in attack? Use that to attack one of the hats, maybe destroy one of the empty ones if he's lucky, and then that means he would have been able to destroy the Dark Magician, uh, which ultimately would have really, really helped him out before the next turn happens. Uh, yes, he could have done that. Why didn't he do that? I guess he didn't know that Magical Hats was going to be face down. He thought he had game. We'll let it slide, actually. In fact, no, yeah, misplay. He could have summoned it in attack anyway. There was no, like, detriment for him not doing it. Oh well. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Graceful Charity. He activates it and draws three cards. He gets the Eye of Tamias and two cards that are never seen or played. Since he must discard two cards, he discards those two mysterious cards. He activates it straight away, which allows it to fuse with any one of his monsters. He merges it with Dark Magician, turning it into Amulet Dragon. Due to Amulet Dragon's effect, Yugi can banish every spell card in his grave to increase the attack of Amulet Dragon by 300 for each. Amulet Dragon then attacks and destroys Guardian Iatos. This marks the first time a Guardian monster has gone to the grave, and as such invokes Raphael to reveal his darkness. Due to Iatos being destroyed, Raphael can special summon Guardian Dread Scythe straight from his deck to the field. When Guardian Dread Scythe is summoned to the field, its effect activates, allowing itself to equip Reaper Scythe the Dread Scythe from his deck. Due to Reaper Scythe's effect, Guardian Dread Scythe gains 500 attack for each monster in Raphael's grave. Finally, it's worth noting that the cost to keep Dread Scythe on the field is that Raphael can no longer summon new monsters to the field while this is on the field. Yugi ends his turn. It's Raphael's turn, 
and he draws twice. He gets Purity of the Cemetery and my body as a shield. Raphael switches Guardian Dreadscythe to attack and activates its third effect, which lets it destroy all other monsters he controls. With all of them in the grave, Dreadscythe's attack increases even further. Raphael then attacks and destroys Amulet Dragon. Raphael ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Card of Sanctity. He activates it to allow both players to draw until they both hold six cards. Raphael draws three new cards and gets Obedience, Spell of Pain, and Dimension Distortion. Yugi draws five new cards and gets What Upon, Dark Magician Girl, Reduction Barrier, Zero Gravity, and two mysterious cards that are never played and never seen. Since Yugi drew What Upon via a card effect, it is special summon straight to the field. Yugi tributes What Upon to summon Dark Magician Girl. Yugi sets Magical Pigeon face down and ends his turn. Speaking of setting Magical Pigeon face down, why didn't Yugi set Magical Pigeon face down before he activated Card of Sanctity? He would have drawn an extra card. His ultimate end play was setting this card face down. So he didn't deviate from his plan at all. The next card he would have drew would have been Underworld Circle. So, yeah, misplay Yugi. This could have possibly cost you the duel not doing this, so bad play. It's Raphael's turn, and he draws twice. He gets Orichalco's Sword of Sealing and Spirit Hunting. Raphael activates Obedience. Now, when Guardian Dreadscythe attacks a defense position monster, Raphael can change the target to attack. And so, Raphael attacks Dark Magician Girl. It's changed to attack, however, Yugi plays Magical Pigeon. This returns Dark Magician Girl back to the hand and replaces it with two Pigeon tokens in defense. Guardian Dreadscythe's attack whiffs, since his target was removed from the field. Unable to attack again, Raphael moves into his main phase too and sets Orichalco's Sword of Sealing and Spirit Hunting face down. As Raphael ends his turn, the last effect of Magical Pigeon activates, destroying the remaining Pigeon token and resummoning Dark Magician Girl back to the field. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Underworld Circle. He activates it. Now, due to its effect, all monsters on the field are destroyed, and all monsters in both players' decks are banished. It sounds like a broken card. We're not done yet. Now, once per turn, each player can special summon one monster from their graveyard, ignoring summoning conditions. When a monster summoned by this effect is destroyed, they are removed from play instead of being sent to the graveyard. We get some out of dual character development here. Raphael and Yugi are transported to Raphael's past. He starts digging up the bones of his deceased family and stuff. It's all pretty dark things, but they both come out with a better understanding of each other after this event anyway. When they return, the last effect of Guardian Dreadscythe activates, which forces Raphael to discard a card in his hand to prevent its destruction by battle and card effects. And so it is not destroyed by Underworld Circle. The card he discards is My Body as a Shield. The effect of Underworld Circle then kicks in, allowing both players to summon a monster from their grave. Yugi summons Dark Magician, while Raphael is unable to summon due to Dread Scythe's maintenance costs. Yugi sets Zero Gravity face down and ends his turn. It's Raphael's turn and he draws twice. He gets two mysterious cards which will never be seen and never be played. Regardless, Underworld Circle's effect kicks in again. Yugi summons Jack's Knight. Raphael again is unable to summon. Raphael enters his battle phase and attacks Dark Magician, but Yugi activates his face down zero gravity to switch all face up monsters on the field into defense. However, Raphael activates his face down spirit hunting, which switches Guardian Dread Scythe to attack. It then destroys all defense position monsters Yugi controls. They are destroyed and subsequently banished due to Underworld Circle's effect. Raphael ends his turn. Yugi draws Altar of Restoration. Yugi uses the effect of Underworld Circle to special summon Dark Magician Girl. He activates Altar of Restoration to remove the top two cards of his deck from play to add one card in his grave back to his hand. He adds the Eye of Tamias. Yugi uses its effect again, but this time fusing with Dark Magician Girl to make Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight. He attacks Guardian Dreadscythe. Yugi activates its effect. Now, by discarding one card in his hand, he can destroy Guardian Dreadscythe at the start of the damage step without applying any damage calculation. However, Guardian Dreadscythe isn't destroyed, since Raphael can simply discard a card to prevent its destruction. Raphael discards Purity of the Cemetery. Yugi sets his Reduction Barrier face down and ends his turn. It's Raphael's turn and he draws twice. 
he gets something and Monster Reborn. Yugi uses the effect of Underworld Circle to special summon Queen's Knight from his grave. Raphael activates his set Orichalco Sword of Sealing. Now, by discarding one card he drew this turn, he can equip this card to one of Yugi's monsters to negate its effects. He discards Monster Reborn and equips his spell onto Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight, to negate all of its effects. Raphael drew two cards here, one of which he's never going to play for the rest of the stall, but it's a shame he didn't discard that one instead of Monster Reborn. I know he can't summon new monsters, but you never know how a duel's going to go. Holding onto the Monster Reborn might be really advantageous later on in the duel. Obviously, by discarding this card, it's going to cost him the duel, but I'm just saying, symbolically, I get why he threw away Monster Reborn. He's chucking all his monsters in the graveyard now. He doesn't need to get them back. Character-wise, it makes sense. Duel-wise, it was a bit of a misplay. Guardian Dread Scythe then attacks and destroys Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. However, before the damage is dealt, Yugi plays Reduction Barrier. This reduces the damage by 90%. Since Raphael was about to do 2,900 damage, 10% of this is only 290, which leaves Yami Yugi with 10 life points left. Raphael ends his turn. I just want to quickly mention this. Yes, Yugi did leave his Queen's Knight in a tap position, which at first I thought was a really silly move. But if Raphael would have just attacked to that Queen's Knight that he left in attack, wouldn't he win the duel since Yugi only has 500 life points left? Well, it turns out that if he would have done that, 5,500 take away 1,500 is 4,000 damage. Damage reduction would have made it go down to 400 damage. So Yugi would have still survived the attack. So, no misplay here. It's Yugi's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Pot of Greed. He uses the effect of Underworld Circle to special summon Big Shield Gardener. He then activates Pot of Greed to draw two new cards. He gets Spider Web and the Claw of Hermos. Yugi activates the Spider Web, which lets him add one card the opponent sent to the graveyard last turn to his hand. He adds Monster Reborn. Yugi then activates it to bring back Guardian Yatos. This decreases Guardian Dread Scythe's attack by 500. Yugi then activates the Claw of Hermos' effect to fuse itself with Queen's Knight to form an equip spell. He makes Goddess Bow. Yugi equips Goddess Bow to Guardian Yatos. This card doubles its attack. Yugi attacks. Goddess Bow's final effect then kicks in. You see, when the monster equipped with this card battles, if an opponent activates an effect of a monster, then this monster is not destroyed in that battle and can instead attack again in a row. Yes, that is a very Taylor-specific effect to have. Perfect for the situation, but we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Since Dread Scythe forces Raphael to discard when it is about to be destroyed, Iatos is able to attack six times in a row. This completely depletes Raphael's hand. On Yugi's final attack, both of them are destroyed. Not to be that guy, but I'm pretty sure that when Iatos is destroyed, even though it's on Yugi's side of the field, in the real world, I think that would summon Dread Scythe back to Raphael's field. But checking on the anime effect of the card, it does state when a Guardian Iatos you controlled is destroyed, you can special summon a Dread Scythe from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So no shenanigans there, but if it was in the real world... <laughs> Unlucky Yugi. Oh, and another thing as well. It's a shame that Yugi didn't bring back his King's Knight, which is like the few remaining cards in his graveyard. Instead, he brought back Big Shield Garden into defense. But if he'd have brought back his King's Knight into attack, he could have attacked for game right now. So, um, yeah, uh, misplayed Yugi. You could have won this duel right here. Anyway, Yugi ends his turn. It's Raphael's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws twice and gets Soul Charge and a Mysterious card. Raphael wanted to fix the mistakes he has made in this duel, uses the effect of Underworld Circle to bring back his Guardian Graal from the grave. He then activates Soul Charge. This allows him to special summon as many monsters as he wants from the grave at the cost of 500 life points for each. Raphael pays the 1500 life point cost for doing so. Yugi wins the duel. Raphael's soul is about to be taken. However, since he conquered the darkness in his own heart and found peace, the seal does not take his soul. And so the duel ends. I know Raphael had planned to lose that duel in that final turn, but let's just say he wanted to win in the end. He could have just brought back like one or two of his monsters, so he'd only have to pay a thousand life points. He could then attack and destroy Yugi's Big Shield Gardener. Yugi is running very, very, very low on monsters left in his graveyard, so if he doesn't draw anything good, honestly, Raphael's probably gonna win this duel. Keep in mind that Yugi can't actually bring back any of the fusion monsters he made in this duel, as like the Tamias cards he makes they're like transformed cards. Like the Dark Magician Girl and the Dark Magician, they turn into the new card. And then when they go to the grave, they go back to being Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. That's how that works. If Raphael really wanted to, he could have won on this final turn, which I 
think is kind of funny. However, I do think that Yugi did plan for victory, and I think he did side deck some cards in to help him out in this duel. And overall, he did play better. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. Catch you later.